All right, welcome to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. It is Monday, December 11th, 2023. It is Monday, December 11th, 2023. The world is still here. Damn it. Okay, so um, welcome to the show. Let me introduce the Godfather Conservative Radio, Mr. Hotch Bailey Jr. And what a year it has been, pray tell. I wish I could pray tell. I don't even know. Let me also introduce the J.R. Robinson of the J.R. Robinsons of the Minnesota Robinsons of Muslim Soda, Mr. J.R. Robinson. The long lineage of Robertsons in Minnesota. Happy Monday, everybody. You survived the weekend. Take a sack while you're tuning in to give the show a share. That's how we beat the, beat the big tech algorithm. And we're currently under cyber attack by China. So it's even more important that we're doing that now. Did you see that? Yeah, I just dropped it in the chat. I'm like, Monday started out so slow. And I've seen like four stories break this morning. I'm like, this is just ridiculous. Yeah, they're getting right into the game, though. They caught a guy spraying swastikas on like a Jewish place or something. A Chinese guy. Right. Well, I mean, look. Guess what? We um we know that the election is within a year. No, we don't. So know we that. know that some. Huh? We don't okay. know that. Okay. We know right. it's scheduled. <laughs> but um, the way the way things are right now, you know, that, I mean, <laughs> I was. <thought, laughs> I mean, we hear more, more reports about. Um, we really don't hear no negative reports about Donald Trump's poll numbers. Have you noticed that? Not one negative report about Donald Trump's poll numbers. The only negative I saw about Donald Trump, uh, incidentally, and this won't surprise you, Wayne, came from Megyn Kelly. Did you see her commentary on this? I saw that. I saw that. Did I you believe that. it? I didn't believe it. I didn't. I, I, I did I, because you know, I kept telling people, I'm like. No, no. I don't no, know I'm why y'all are rolling over to that woman. But what she was saying, I don't believe what she was saying. I mean, the things that she said she saw, I didn't see. Did she basically came out and said Donald Trump yeah, between sure. 2016 and now has missed a couple of steps. He, he's yeah. off. Yeah. And I'm like, I missed that part. I mean, I haven't watched as many rallies as I've watched before. But uh, I'm going to have to. Uh, she said he's mixing countries up and just stuff that I haven't seen. Did you guys see any of that? Yeah. I see Donald Trump isn't as crisp as he was. And I think it's a combination. He's right. older. Um, if you think, you know, every day, like he's fighting off 91 indictments and lawsuits. He's got a lot on, on his mind, of, too. Yeah. Right. That's a, right. That's a fact. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, he's got a lot on his mind. He strikes me as like when you're sitting in a meeting and the guy you're having the meeting with, like, just has way too much stuff going on. And sometimes, like, they just, he just isn't as crisp. In in my, I think that's fair criticism, but I don't think, I don't think he's like mentally collapsing like they're trying to frame it up as. But right, but listening to her and the way that she was going and stuff, sound like she was more pushing toward Ron DeSantis than than she was uh, anything else. I mean, she she was disparaging uh, America. Amer I guess Gabby. I, I guess Debbie meant Americans in America is killing him. Um, and that could be his spirit, too. Uh, she may be talking about his spirit because, you know, he did say, I'm not going to show up for the rest of this this uh, this trial. I'm not going to testify anymore. 
he was probably going to, and then he woke up and was like, I ain't going to do it. You know, What's I'm the out. point? Yeah. Um, yeah, but in speaking about the election, supposed election next year, uh, there's more news that um, he's increased his numbers in Iowa, uh, which, again, um, I was talking with Ava yesterday, Ava Chen of New Federal State of China. And that's why I kind of labeled this show about be careful, y'all. Be careful. Because this could be a trick of the establishment to make it look like he's so far out ahead that you get complacent. And if you get complacent, I mean, ha- I mean, and, and please, it happens every election, especially yeah. If, um, the way that the media has been reporting on elections and stuff, people out west are like, Psh, well, I don't have to vote. Um, but that's something that Jay was trying to say about Iowa last week. It's like MAGA needs to come out in force. You need to come out in force no matter what. Show up and 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 caucus. Show up and, I mean, make them kick you out. And then do a video that they had to kick you out because there were too many in there. Okay. But at least show up. Don't think. Again, we just get uh, um, yesterday, his numbers went up in Iowa. Well, it's good if you hear from us on social media. Yeah, that's right. His number went up. He went up right now. The people in Iowa was like, I, on the people in Iowa was like, well, you know, he's got it. I don't have to show up. No, you do. Ava yesterday was like, uh, people in elections have to act like they are behind. No matter what the media says, act like you're behind. Act like you are down 10 points and your vote really is going to matter. Period. You know? It's a very serious situation. I mean, this is one of those situations, if we don't get it right, it's never going to be right. It's never, no, no, it's never going to be right. Well, and the numbers, we're dealing with a, as big as Trump's lead is in the polls, if you believe the polls, and I don't believe polls ever, I think they can directionally be right. But 2 million, less than 2 million people vote in the actual presidential election. In the 2020 election, it was 900,000 people voted for President Trump. So that's that's a total population of 900,000. If you look at most Iowa caucuses, it's between 100 and 180,000 people vote in the caucus. So you're talking one out of 10 of those 900,000 people. Now, give credit where they're due. Ron DeSantis got a lot of the local politician endorsements with his bus tour. So you know those people will go out and vote and they will bring people with them to vote. <clears throat> so even if Ron DeSantis, let's say there's 900,000, let's say 15% support him, That's 150,000. But if that 150,000 turns out to vote and the 450,000 MAGA doesn't turn out to vote, that's that's when it gets dicey, you know, because it's all about turnout. One out of 10, one out of 10 presidential election voters turn out for a primary. So. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. I um, I don't know. I don't know whether y'all. so I think it was on Friday. I think it was on a Friday night. Um, Casey DeSantis. Yeah. <laughs> um, and 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 now and now she's trying to walk it back. You know, she well, I didn't tell them to come out and vote. Well, I mean, in a way, you did. I mean, you did the words you didn't say, come out and vote. You said come out and participate. You basically said come in, and and I'm gonna replay the, the quick video in a second, but it left me, that left me thinking, it's okay. I'm not, I'm not beside learning new things, but I've never heard of people that don't live in Iowa traveling to Iowa and then participating in the Iowa caucuses if you it's don't illegal. live in the state. It's illegal. Right. right. So, how in the world 
Would she have a huge coalition across the United States of America of mothers and grandmoms? When the governor was reelected, uh, we had a coalition of 1.1 million mothers and grandmoms in the state of Florida. That was the largest that had ever been done in the, the history of our state and probably, I would argue, across yeah. the nation. We're asking all of these moms and grandmoms to come from wherever it might be, North Carolina, South Carolina, and to descend upon the state of Iowa to be a part of the caucus because you do not have to be a resident of Iowa to be able to participate in the caucus. So moms and grandmoms are going to be able to come and be a part and to let their voice be heard in support of Ron. You know, the the story I saw that covered that (laughs) said that Martha McCallum sat there like a potted plant. I know she did. Well, you know what though? I thought, I thought she realized that Casey just messed up because if you listen to her undertone, she, uh, oh, oh, Okay. Either that or I was thinking, you know, you get put on the spot like that sometimes. Maybe she doesn't know. I mean, you can't expect a news anchor to know all 50 states. See, if I was March, I would have been, what are you talking about? People can go to Iowa and vote? <laughs> Is that a thing? <laughs> but, but, but then I would have came right behind you, Jay, and said, Is that what you did in Florida? Right. You know, you she did. is she's number one polling for governor of Florida. Who? Casey? Casey DeSantis. That's funny. I saw that this morning, getting ready for the show. Really? But then again, yeah. I mean, go I'll I'll default to Jason's uh idea on polling. Oh right. yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking about um I was thinking about the word polling this morning for the show, and I was like, and you, actually, I turned 55 yesterday. Um, so when I woke up this morning, I see like maybe five, six people uh, in the news that died of 52, 51, <laughs> everybody I ever, Everybody I ever knew is dead. I, I, I was like, how in the, whole, I mean, whole town it's not even died. 55, 48 hours. And I, I mean, I'm like, <laughs> dang. I mean, okay. Why am I here still? I, It'll be. I'll tell you what's fun, Wayne, and the audience can relate to this probably. You'll know that you've reached a level when you're sitting around with a bunch of friends of yours or somewhere at a gathering, you know, at a restaurant or a diner or something. And there's a few of your friends that are like your age, and everybody starts talking about what prescriptions they got. <laughs> right. <laughs> we joke about that. When you get old enough, you get the old man pill bottle with the Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Wednesday, Thursday. Like oh, that's man. Your I, I went to my I went to my first retirement lunch and it was like, oh yeah, you know I got these shingles and and, and you know the doctor woke me up. It's like, dude, I don't want to talk about this stuff. Either that or they opened it <laughs> opened the paper to the obituary section. Yeah, I remember that growing up. I used to see old people do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, look, they they run. Hey Wayne, um, take this thirty five cent go and go and um, get me a paper and bring it back. I'm thinking that they're gonna look at the front to the back. Right. Oh, oh hell no. Right? Oh. Yeah, Camelia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw it too early this morning. I was taking the dog out, taking him for a walk, and I saw I saw it this morning. Um, yeah, but I it's like polling. Whoever came up with polling, they did it for a reason. To sway you, the American people, to vote one way or another way. That's the only reason why you have polling. It's not to help you. Remember, the media's not trying to help you. They're trying to indoctrinate you and to to program you. (laughs) You know, we talk about how they name things that are, that tell you exactly what they are television programming i mean it's always been that television programming you know and we just oh yeah it's a tv program yeah okay all right you don't get it you, you don't get it it's tv programming you know um so well, and i gotta drive home the the participation number i mean hutch who is actively involved in local politics hutch how many times did you vote in the primary like all of them? Um, pretty much none of them. Oh, really? Except, <laughs> except for except for Trump. Uh, well, because by the time it gets to Pennsylvania, it's already over. Right. 
You know, I mean, if I was in Iowa, I'd be all in it because now you got the yeah. first chance to make something happen. But by the time it gets to Pennsylvania, you already know who the, who the nominee is. I'm just saying, as you line so, up 10, 10 Iowa voters and say only one of those 10 are going to vote, it's going to be your state assemblyman. It's going to be your people. I don't think that'll happen in Ohio just because of the, and I, here's the reason why. And I fully agree with what you're saying as far as strategically. Right. But I think in 2023, there isn't an American out there that doesn't know we're cooked. Right. I mean, even, even if it's, he's in the bluest blue Democrat dog day Democrat in the hood, it's bad in the hood too. You know, it's bad everywhere. Everybody can see this, you know, and, and I just think if, if that's the case and that happens, then we deserve what we get. I think that it's a, it's a duty that you have to participate in this. And I think now more, I mean, I think people have felt the idea that we are almost in world war three. Right. I really do. And I, and I think when you see people talking about eating bugs and you see anthrax attacks on Montana cattle yards and different things like that, I, I think that I, I just can't see how somebody could stay home right now. And when I said about the primaries, it's also because I live where the Democrats win everything mm. by, ten, by tenfold. You know, there's no a Republican can't win here, right. not lo- not locally, but when it comes to nationally, um, I I do vote in them. I voted for Trump every time because I really felt the energy there, but there was no energy for George W. Bush. I knew he was going to win. You know, the the primary it was over. Did or, you, you know, know? or not or Romney or McCain? Yeah, by that time, by the time they got to Pennsylvania, other state, so many big other states had voted that there was no way to turn it around. Oh yeah. The early on prim- uh, the early primary season. Gotcha. You, gotcha. You, I got you. I got you. Look, yeah. Once um, you had super Tuesday, it's over. Yeah. 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 And Pennsylvania is not for three more weeks after that. Real quick. I came across, um, uh, the, you know, we've kind of called out. Well, I think we've called out to a point, James Comer, um, uh, for the show that he's putting on. And I think I played this last week, but I'm not sure. I'm not going to play the whole thing. But I just saw a response from somebody from Newsmax talking with James Comer. So let me play just this part. Okay, let me add this. This, Jake, this whole thing's been about a cover-up. You know, you've got two. Watch Jake Tapp. That's why he indicted him to to protect him, to to cover it up. Well, Look, you indict him on the least little thing, the gun charge. And not paying taxes. He's facing like 17 I mean, additional years in prison. Yeah, but look These what he's felonies. done. Anybody else, anybody else in America would already be in prison. Would already be in prison. You say he owes $2 million. He may owe 7 or $8 million. If these loans are, are fraudulent loans. I mean, a loan means if. you are going to pay it back. <laughs> so, so look, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, this money's coming from bad people around the world. Yeah. Why are they paying Hunter? Why are they paying Hunter Biden? We believe that it's because they wanted direct access to Joe Biden. And I don't think any American, whether they're Democrat or Republican, would want to have a president that's compromised to our biggest enemy in the world, China. So, again, okay, now, I now asked for China. one piece of evidence or testimony that directly and credibly connected President Biden to proven misconduct. I, I, I will. I said it. I said it. The, fire, the termination mm. of Shokin in yeah, Ukraine, not, as well that, as the, that isn't it. his... His that son and brother. Well, I looked, y'all have been saying no evidence for a long time, and Hunter was innocent. I, I mean, said it doesn't no, look to me like Hunter. No, no, I never Hunter said that. I've never said that about Hunter. I've, I've, oh, I've never said that about Hunter. But <laughs> it's only a two hour show. Chairman James Comer always. When that happened, la- when that happened last week, I posted on social media. I was like, don't, I, if, if you don't know somebody's making fun of you, Something's wrong. If you don't know, I mean, Comer should have got up and walked out because the more it got into it, the more Jake was 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 making fun of him. Do you, I do you like, think that do you this the, does, sad. does the CIA give Jake Tapper a badge? Is he like an official agent? I mean, he Comer was right. And, and Tapper got busted. He, he was like, oh, what do you mean? He's going to do 17 years. No, he's not going to do 17 years. And if, but, if, even if he does, so what? 
Who cares here, about Hunter Biden? Yeah, it, um, it says here, uh, James Comer defended last Friday's dis disastrous interview with Jake Tapper during a Monday, Monday morning appearance on Newsmax. He admitted that while the CNN anchor was very smart, he was trying to appeal to a low IQ audience. Um, well, they always know what to say, don't they? <laughs> the the Newsmax host were like, you see what's happening here. He's trying to make your investigation sound like a joke, and he's trying to make you look like a joke. And then half of America sees that, and then they think your investigation is a joke. How do you work around that? How do you work through that? Comer's like, well, that's the first time I've been on CNN in three months. We thought we would give it a try. No, man. No. No. I mean, if if y'all are gonna make that complete switch, if y'all are doing the doing the whatever you're doing to try to bring people back to your side, you don't go in there and and look like you. You don't go in there and look like you got a bucket of water, but you ain't got no water in it. So you got to look at the thing. There, there's never, I don't think that there's ever been a plan to impeach the Bidens. And and I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you one of the, one of Running the, out of the, clock. Running out the clock. one of the clues to me is that guy, James Comer voted to throw Santos out of the house. Yep. Now, if you cared about impeaching Biden, why would you do that? Oh, oh. well, and here's the other thing is, you have to understand if you're going to appeal to a left wing audience, they they are not going to see Joe Biden's corruption unless you have Hunter on camera handing a check to Joe Biden and saying, Joe Biden, this check is for the political favor you did for communist China. Even then. And then they'll call it Russia misinformation. Yeah, I, I'm just saying. James has, Comer has a ton of circumstantial evidence. We've talked about that on the show. The Bidens and the other departments, the three-letter agencies, have obstructed giving him the evidence that could, like right now we've got Joe standing in the library with the candlestick that's bloody and a dead body. And they're saying, well, you didn't see him hit him. And no, With they nobody else around. With nobody else around. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so right now they need to get more of the documentation <laughs> Like, it's clear what happened. Anybody with half a brain cell can tell what happened, right? But you know that <laughs> none of none of them want it. I mean, the, the only, there's only one right. way. The, the evidence doesn't mean anything. The evidence is nothing. The only thing that matters is a vote in the Senate, right? It's not a real court of law. It's a freaking shame. And <laughs> the only way you can successfully impeach somebody is with both parties are coming after you. Right. That's why Richard Nixon resigned. Exactly. Exactly. And that's why that's why when they were talking about it, I'm like, first off, the Senate is Democrat. They're going to throw it down anyway. So no matter what the evidence. <laughs> it's a waste of freaking time. Period. And, and, it if, is. And, if, and if you want to get a conviction on the Republican side, you better have a two thirds majority. You got because to. there's Democrat plants in that Democrats in that Republican right. Senate. And see, up all of yep. I have supported the impeachment if you get the evidence and can show the American people here is the smoking gun. But yeah. until you actually subpoena, get the evidence. I mean, we're we're a year into this and they're they're just getting around to talking to Hunter. They yeah. don't have bank it's records. A fraud. It, this whole thing is a fraud. fraud. It is a fraud. And, and then you gave him six, seven, eight months to come up with. <laughs> Um, excuse me. I want to go testify in front of Congress. If you want right. to, you want to bring down the criminal Bidens, then you got impeachment's not the way to go. Department right. of Justice is the way to go. Yep. But can you imagine Department that? Of Justice. But can you imagine? He was like, <laughs> yeah. <I got it. laughs> um, yeah. I want to testify in front of Congress, and you got Republicans going. No, <laughs> no, we no. It's a joke. What, no, um, no, there's no way. Like, no, for I really want to touch him, Congress. I really do. Please, please. And then he came out on Friday, or Saturday night. They're trying to, they're trying yeah. to kill me. Yeah. <laughs> 
You're this playing. is an embar- you know, this is an embarrassment. The whole thing. Man. Yeah, I, I should have knew how bad it was back when Eric Holder was going through it. But yeah, this they yeah. tore this Justice Department up. They knew what they were doing, boy. Obama, man, wow. Well, and just think of these Hunter Biden charges. They've been actively investigating him since like 2018, 2019, I think was when the IRS first opened up this case. So you've got what four years, five years, and Donald Trump in since the since all these cases, since Trump was removed from office, you know, it's been like half that time. And he's already in court, in trial for 91 indictments. And you you, you just look at that. That's comical, though. Right. The bad part is the whole world's watching us and falling apart. You know, know. you you look at what's going on in Ireland. I mean, with the hate speech and the misinformation that that our rights are getting eroded right in front of us. Um, And and, and my friends, we've been seeing that on the show. And 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 it's funny when you um, when you try to tell people online that our rights have I mean, that our rights very slowly calculated have been taken away from us. People are like, what rights are you talking about? You- exactly. You, you want to know the best <laughs> phrase, the best couple phrases that you hear about the Second Amendment and people like you're talking about? What do you mean? You're not allowed to have machine guns. Yeah, I know. That's the point. Right. <laughs> That's the point. We did that in 1930. Have right, right. You can't buy a hardwood, sir. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's ridiculous, but it, but it's exactly like that. It's the frog in the cold pot of water and you turn the fire on by the time he figures it out, he's cooked. Yeah. I think we have a frog for dinner. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if you look at freedom of speech, even like Alex Jones, he got back on Twitter this weekend and you know, there's a lot of hubbub around that. But he was him and Laura Loomer were the canary in the coal mine back in 2017, 2018, when they started canceling them electronically on every platform. And everybody's like, oh, that'll never happen to us. I'm not a crazy crackpot like Alex Jones. And soon the Wayne Dupree show gets suppressed on Facebook because they don't like what we say. It's just funny. He can kiss my ass. Though. That was um, an interview, too. boy. I, I, I look at that guy come, and I've met him in person. Yeah, we had I, I, yeah, me and Wayne did. And I, I have to say, I look at him in a completely different light than I did last week after that interview with Tucker Carlson. He, his methodology of how he figures stuff out blew yeah. my mind. I mean, he gets up in the, like early in the morning and starts combing through stuff that people, normal people don't read. But, you know, uh, you know, I, I, wasn't gonna, I really wasn't going to say much, too much about it, but you can't get too far ahead in this country with the people that are in charge unless they let you get far ahead in this country. You know what I'm saying? To an extent, yeah. I mean, there's people that'll break the mold. I mean, but and and if they break the mold, they get broke. Sometimes. Trump oh. is who I'm Trump's who I'm talking about. Well, right, 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 right. I'm I'm talking the media, about the, the media can tear down, down, so. the media can tear down people that they build. Yes. Yes, yes. That's, just, that's, just watch, just watch DeSantis in the next couple months. Right. <laughs> well, here's the thing with Alex Jones for the Alex Jones plug. Everybody gets tied up <laughs> in his presentation, and yeah. he's all loud and obnoxious. He actually reads a lot of source documents. The guy says he has a photographic memory, and he sees things, read things, and then he goes, "Wait a second, I saw this here, this here, this here. Oh, that's what this all adds up to." which really isn't all that different than what we do on this show. You know, only we don't scream as much. Anybody ever call him a fed? Yes. There's actually a conspiracy theory that Donald Trump's a fed, that he was a plant by that. the left. I saw that. Yeah. Um, but the reason why I said about Alex is because one of his number one guys or number two guys went to jail. He just got out, though. Oh, right, right, right. But he went. Yeah. Alex, Alex never went to jail. I'm not, I mean, and, and, and I'm, I'm just putting it out there. There's a whole lot of people that are online and I'm not saying Alex Jones is one. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. There's a whole lot of people online. I'm serious. That's why I'm talking about the misinformation type. And we're going to be talking to Ayla Wang in just a few seconds. There's, 
this misinf this misinformation thing is so covert, is so evil, is so under under um, under the radar that if we tell you who we think might be part of the government or close to it, we get scrutinized, we get labeled heretics, we get excommunicated. Like, like I say from from day one, um, I believe that Elon Musk and um, X have a connection with the FBI and the CIA. I do. They have a connection with the CCP. Why not? I mean, anytime that you can get on there and say, yep, I am 100% behind the communist uh, uh, ideals and I support whatever they do over there. You don't see us doing that. You don't see us doing that. You don't see re you don't see real America, even real Americans that don't understand China. We don't get in front of something say, "Oh yeah, we support the communists." You don't see us doing that. He gets away with it. I guess when you have f u money, and then with the with the robots that he has on social media defending him, I mean, it's like the X Men, man. Yeah, I mean, you got. You got um, Cyclops and, and 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 robots. You say something bad about, it. yeah, but it's free speech. It's free speech for some people. A whole lot of us are still suppressed. A whole lot of us are still underneath the. Uh, I mean, look, I look at I look at some people. I don't even know why I did it, but I, I look at some people's timeline and I look at their reach, and they might have 50,000 people, but their reach is like two hundred thousand. 247,000, 317,000. And I look at mine, and mine is eight, two, 2.7, 3,000. I'm like, what is it? I, I, I even put my cat up there. Here, look, cat, <laughs> cat photo. I, nothing political. Look, food, food photo, cat photo. That's, that's still now. That might get 10 or 11. That might get 10 or 11. You know, but as I said last week, I'm still not going to speak racist stuff. I'm still not going to do all that stuff because, you know, I'm not in this thing for clicks, but the reach thing is wrong. Ain't J J It's wrong. Come on now. You know, come on. Come on. I am going to give a yes and no answer. Uh, yes, there is suppression online. Yes, we battle suppression online. However, there are things people can do to get reach on, on things like Twitter. Like through the American Tribune, we have four or five different Twitter pages, and we each tweet, tweet differently. I have the biggest following, and I get the least reach because of my tweeting cadence. And like Todd, one of my partners, he does a different tweeting cadence. He gets much better reach than I do. And... And like that is intentional in our tweets. I talk about some things, he talks about other things. And so there's a way to manipulate the algorithms to do that. I mean, so I could probably manipulate it by changing my name because of what NewsGuard and all of them have done. My right. name, I mean, and 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 that hurts. That hurts I, actually as a man, you you want your name. You know, you defend your name, you defend your daddy's name and stuff like that. So, okay, fine. When I saw that my name came up with, oh man, when I saw that my name came up with all of the other, um, misinformation, conservative websites that push out information, when I saw my name come up with them, that they, that it had been included in, what the government and what NewsGuard and them have taken down. Well, actually, NewsGuard didn't take it down. They just made it easy for advertisers to say, no, 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 no. Okay. So then it's like, I've always felt to me what Elon should have went in. He should have went in, got rid of all that code, stuck with the basics. And said, okay, everybody has a clear. You want to bring back people? Bring back people. You want to bring back Hutch? You want to bring back Alex? You want to bring back those people? Fine. You want to put the community standards on people? Do that. Um, uh, you know, but that would have been the 
Ferris thing. It yep. seemed like to me what has happened is he gives um, quarter or he gives um, um, status for people who subscribe to him. And then he um, retweets some shares, shares, whatever. Now I know that I subscribed to him for about a month and he still didn't, um, he still didn't um, do anything for me. So I unsubscribed myself. Well, and to but, give a technical explanation of what happens. So let's say your audience is 400,000 like Wayne's. If you're a suppressed 500. account, what's that? 500. Is it five? So five hundred thousand. Look, you don't even. Oh man! Oh my God! You, Whatever, five hundred thousand. I'll get you. A, I got you a bunch of coffee cups. What more do you need out of me? You know what, too? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm get. I'm, I'm get you for that one. I'm get you. I'm. I'm. I'm get you for that one. Believe everybody that, that comes to your house gets a coffee cup this fall. I ain't got five hundred people that's coming to my house, man. I'm like, <coughs> I'm like, what is that? A treadmill? What is that? And, and they were opening it up. <laughs> what? I opened it up and it's like cups, cups, more cups, cups. And what? Oh, hell no, man. What are you doing? Okay. I, I got you. I got you. Uh, but anyway, so Wayne with 500,000 on a normal account, they would send his initial tweet out to 5,000 people. Then, based on the engagement of that 5,000 people, they would decide how many more they push it to. Now, on a suppressed account, on a suppressed account, it goes out to 2,000 people instead of 5,000. So that's how the suppression works. It just goes out to a smaller initial audience. Don't take uh, off of the devil. Don't don't take off of the devil. I mean, Elon Musk can be true at once sometimes. Elon Musk is a CCP agent. So. I'm not disputing it. Okay. Let me, let me bring our awesome little sister, Ava Chen, from the new federal state of China. What's up? No, no, Ayla. I'm sorry. <laughs> What's up, little, little sister? What's going on? Hi, Wayne. Hi, Hutch. Hi, Jason. How are you? And happy belated birthday, Wayne. Thank you. Thank you. You know, wait a minute, Hutch. I think me, you got to do something with our chairs because uh, J Rob and Ayla. Got these little scientific chairs. That but the headrest going on in case they get rear-ended or something. Look at that. It is a video game chair. I'm just saying. Ayla's got like a fancy official chair. I look, hey, look, um, little sister, I gotta talk to you after the show. I want to find out where you got that chair. That's a nice chair. Okay, listen. Um, a lot to talk about, short time to do it. Glad to have you once again from the new federal state of China. And um, our family over there. I heard some news yesterday, and I want you to confirm for all of our listeners and whatnot. Most of you know, or if most of you didn't know, a um, Ayla is part of the New Federal State of China, and the New Federal State of China was founded by Miles Guo, who is currently in jail, no bond, but that might be changing. Oh, yeah. Could be changing. Ayla, let us know something. Thank you, Wayne. Uh, well, obviously, the legal teams are, are helping Miles on, on all of his, you know, legal matters. From the public files by the court, we have seen that, you know, Miles recently filed a new bail application, and, and this is his second time. Um, you know, to file that uh, bill application. And then for Miles himself, that his primary intention was to have the movement focus on taking down the Chinese Communist Party. We completely understand and we have so much confidence in his current, you know, legal defense team. We believe that everything is working on the right track and we have full, you know, confidence in his case. So I think, you know, uh, at this moment, because, you know, the bill application is still pending results, I think, you know, we, we will, you, you know, we will, you know, spend more time talking on other movement, uh, you know, matters. But, you know, at this point, we, we just want to be thankful to all of, you know, Miles' legal defense team. They have been working very hard and they have been working very well on all of you know, their strategies and their advices. And, and this is the things that all of the supporters within the new federal state of China have been learning from, you know, their actions and their strategies about the U.S. judicial systems every single day. Got you. 
Ayla, um, the new federal state of China has always been at the vanguard uh, of uncovering the truth that happened during the COVID uh, attack. Uh, and, and I see that um, some of the even people in the Biden administration, former COVID advisors, are uh, admitting that this thing probably did come from a lab, a chemical warfare, biological warfare lab in Wuhan, China. Yeah, Hutch, we were surprised to see, you know, former, uh, you know, Biden administration COVID advisor actually admit certain possibilities of that virus coming out from the Wuhan lab. But the only thing is, this is not a strong sentence, right? Saying that it is possible that does not mean that, you know, it, it, they're possessing a very affirmative attitude of revealing the truth. Don't forget that the Chinese Communist Party have never said a single word about the truth of the connections between the COVID-19 virus and their Wuhan Institute of Virology. And just recently, the head of the, their Wuhan uh, lab, Wang Yanyi, actually accepted an interview and posted online saying that she had been publicly denouncing that to politic, uh, you know, to politicizing the origin of the virus. And she publicly denied that the virus came from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. So my question is, uh, why don't you reveal your connections with Dr. Fauci? And why don't you, you know, reveal your money ties and your relationship and your intimate relationship ties with Dr. Fauci while the head of the Wuhan Institute of Virology studies in the United States? What are the scientists that she has been in contact with? And why have she become the youngest, you know, the Wuhan lab had ever in history? What are her ties with the Communist Party? All of these things that Miles had actually been said, you know, two years ago, three years ago, and this, the, all these intelligence has been reconfirmed again and again. And today, there are viral, you know, respiratory you know, uh, diseases coming up again in China. That people are wearing masks again, and the hospitals are full of patients today. So. The China, you, you know, if we don't investigate thoroughly of the Wuhan Institute of Virology, what we are expecting is another pandemic that could be possibly launched by Chinese Communist Party again and could cause a few more millions of American people's death in the United States. So this is where I think our administration needs to possess a stronger and affirmative attitude of a complete and thorough investigation on the CCP virus. You know, Ayla, it's crazy that it's a couple of years after all this came out and they were trying to tell us it was a pangolin in the wet market <laughs> and we still don't have all the information. Um, it, I mean, if you think about that, it's been years. And, and let me just say too, tell Miles, we are pulling for him and God bless him. It sounds like exciting news for him and the whole team at the NFSC. And we just need his commitment that he's going to be on our show once he gets out. That's right. We totally want Miles on here, uh, but but it's interesting. Going into my next next question is: It looks like there's this escalation going on between China and Taiwan, and now they're dropping Chinese balloons over Taiwan. and And I don't like to get too crazy conspiratorial, but I'm starting to connect some dots where we think Hollywood is in on it, where they start conditioning people went by dropping shows. This weekend, they dropped a show about a cyber attack on the USA. Did that you watch that? Supported, that was supported by the that, by yeah. the Obamas. Yeah, they were part of the, oh, de well. the development. And then I saw this stuff coming out with the balloons flying over Taiwan and a potential cyber attack. And now this morning it broke on the news that China did a cyber attack on America. And like, can you connect some of these dots for me? Like, what's going on in Taiwan? It looks like they're getting ready to pull something there. And then how does that connect to what we see going on over here? Hey, Ayla, too. Ayla, I also have a quick video on that um, report, too, if you don't mind. Let me. Um... Post reveals hackers affiliated with China's People's Liberation Army have infiltrated critical services here in the U.S. Alexandra Hoff joins us now from our nation's capital. Alex, this is not good. 
No, it's not. I mean, this infiltration appears to be part of a broader effort to insert chaos into our logistical systems. The information collected could then be weaponized if the U.S. and China were to become engaged directly in the Pacific. According to reporting from the Washington Post, setting multiple U.S. and industry security officials, China's cyber army, army is invading critical U.S. services, like an attempt to break into the system behind Texas's independent power grid. Other victims include a water utility in Hawaii, a West Coast port, and at least one oil and gas pipeline, according to that report you're seeing there. Brandon Wells, executive director of the Department of Homeland Security Cybersecurity Agency, told the Washington Post this, quote, it is very clear that Chinese attempts to compromise critical infrastructure are in part to pre-position themselves to be able to disrupt or destroy that critical infrastructure in the event of a conflict to either prevent the United States from being able to project power into Asia or to cause societal chaos inside the United States to affect our decision making around a crisis. The report notes that over the past year, hackers affiliated with the People's Liberation Army in China have accessed the computer systems of about two dozen critical entities. What what Jason was speaking about just a while ago and with that video, did you notice how our media does not call them the CCP? They just call them China? Absolutely, Wayne. And I think the Chinese Communist Party had planned very long time for this cyber, um, you know, cyber infiltration and cyber warfare. And Laos is the perfect example, right? All of these, you know, the media cut off the, the cancel culture of Mao's interview in, in the past several years were all manipulated and orchestrated by the Chinese Communist Party. And even today, you know, in the United States, the Huawei headquarters is still in Washington, D.C. that have never been removed. Right. And, and so how can the United States blame that, that the Chinese Communist Party is conducting an infiltration cyber warfare on you? You are allowing CCP's largest technology stealing company um, and a military technology company to set up its headquarter in Washington, D.C. and just very near, you know, to the White House. And so and, and and when the host, you know, of Fox News mentioned that, you know, uh, the West Coast was also uh, one of the primary targets. And yes, the Chinese Communist Party had deployed uh, meticulous uh, military tactics, their networks and, and technologies uh, around the West Coast. And that has been mentioned by Mao in his previous videos as well. And regarding you know to the spy balloons the chinese communist party had mastered the technologies of building up these spy balloons at very cheap costs and when the, when the ccp you know sends out the first spy balloons to the united states don't forget that the chinese communist party had also deployed their military infrastructures into cuba into the bahamas and into all of the neighbors of the United States, it is very easy for them to launch such a spy balloon to the United States, let alone Taiwan. So when we look at this, I think the United States needs to pay a further attention on mastering the general CCP's military tactic and technology and deploying networks in the worldwide. That was, we should not just look at a single point that the Chinese Communist Party is, on the one hand, conducting a cyber warfare and infiltration into the, you know, the two dozen critical industries of the United States. They have been planned for a long time, and the United States still allow Huawei to set up its headquarters in D.C. That is the problem, right? So... And, and if we look at the tension between the CCP and Taiwan, we should also probably pay attention on the South China Sea. That recently yeah. there have been heavy collisions and, yeah. and, 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 and you know, intensive uh, conversations on that. Yeah, let's uh, let's go into that a little bit. Uh, talk about in the South China Sea, the Chinese Communist Party is specifically the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, has basically constructed a military airbase island there. I mean, with a 20,000-foot-long runway. We're not talking Cessnas here. Uh, and now you have – this is a much bigger region than just China. I mean, just Taiwan, rather. Taiwan's at the northern end of it. But you go all the way down to the Philippines and Cambodia and Vietnam to the west. Uh, this is a big deal. And now there's – like you said, there's naval collisions between vessels. And this didn't just start. This has been going on for six, seven years. Yeah. They were firing water cannons at each other uh, several years ago. But now you've got the Philippines and the Chinese Communist Party accusing each other. Give us yeah. a little update on that very uh, sensitive area, Isla. 
Absolutely. And as you said, Hutch, you know, the, the Chinese Communist Party has established illegal military infrastructures in the, in the South China Sea. And this was not news to us. Right. right. And, and yet we still don't haven't seen strong actions uh, of the United States to eliminating all these illegal infrastructures in the South China Sea. The South China Sea military infrastructure was not primarily only targeting Taiwan, it also targets to the United States on the Asia Pacific area, uh, you know, piece as well, right? So I think when Mao said, you know, in, in the previous videos, he said that one day the United States well made up its mind and, and to, and to, you know, eliminating all of the illegal military infrastructures in the South China Sea. And on the other hand, I think we should pay attention on the U.S.'s Ronald Reagan that the Ronald Reagan, uh, the U.S.'s Ronald Reagan once was, uh, you, you know, by uh, the Taiwan uh, area, and it left, uh, and it left afterwards. But what are the other strategies that the U.S. Navy could possibly have with the with the with the current, you know, collision that we saw in in South China Sea? And uh, I think that was, you know, uh, for us to pay higher attention. You know, speaking of paying attention, as you look at the calendar. Taiwan has an election in just over 30 days. And just, I don't know Taiwanese politics, but just looking at it from an outsider and reading some of the information, which a lot of it could be propaganda, it looks like there's a good chance that some pro CCP people can win the election. A am I seeing that wrong? Or what's the level of concern over there about that election? Absolutely, Jason. Well, I think there are absolutely candidates who are actually promoting the Chinese Communist Party, right? They are very pro-communists and that they have been on the one hand said that they want to protect their democracy and rule of law of Taiwan. And on the other hand, that they have actually been saying that, no, we need to strengthen, strengthen the relationship with the Chinese Communist right. Party to ensure a safer Taiwan and which was absolutely a lie. And, and that there are other candidates who have been visiting the United States. Willem Lai, he has been visiting the United States and he has been uh, having a stronger attitude on, on defending uh, Taiwan on its independence and, and democracy. But what we concern is that the Chinese Communist Party had infiltrated Taiwan for a very, very long time. And it is no doubt, you know, it is not a surprise to us that candidate that, that even presidential candidates can be controlled and be bought out by the CCP. So the only thing we what we concerned about Taiwan was Taiwan has very internal traders who have been sold out their souls and sold out the island's interest to the Communist Party years ago, decades ago. That was not even to today. And when we, when you saw that you know our chapter in, uh, of an FSC in Taiwan, their protests or their actions were always being watched by the government. And when they protest against you know the the controlled media of the Chinese Communist Party, you saw people coming up to the streets and and, and trying to initiate a fight. And, and this was all hands of the Chinese Communist Party, right? So I think Taiwan people is luckier because they still have their votes. But they they must make very wise and very smart choices on their elections. The Chinese Communist Party have already stepped their feet into Taiwan in years ago, and mm -hmm. and so they have very you know we we all have very you know fill time of defeating the Chinese Communist Party. And going back to the virus you know topic, the Chinese Communist Party still establishing new P three and P four labs in the world which was not covered by the mainstream media. So how much time, you know, would we have of confronting the CCP? A single pandemic can kill millions of Americans death, right? And, and, and what if they launch another pandemic in the coming up election season, not only for Taiwan, but also for the United States? These are all possible tactics by the CCP. So I think Taiwan people should all rise up and understand that it is the fault of the Chinese Communist Party to infiltrate its communist authoritarian um, you know, ideologies into Taiwan. The fault is not on the Chinese people. There are many, many Chinese people who actually appreciate Taiwan and who long for the freedom and rule of law that was preserved in the Taiwanese culture. And, and this is, you know, what the new federal state of China wants to do. We want to combine the beauties of the West and the East and to unite all of the Chinese around the globe to take down the CCP. 
uh, um, before I let you go, don't don't the I'm sure. Well, don't the people that are helping the Taiwanese, or even if they are Taiwanese, that are working with the CCP, don't they realize that? I mean, if it works out for them and the CCP does take over um, Taiwan, uh, don't they realize that the CCP will probably get rid of them because you can't trust a traitor? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, in the short run, you'd be like, yeah, help us, help us. But in the long run, you're like, I mean, it's all better when there's no witnesses. Right, right. exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think you are mentioning that at a very, you know, good end goal. Just look at the top CCP officials. How much, you know, how many officials has been disappeared from the public in the past like 12 months? Simple, very simple. Yeah. Former China president can be taken away on the National Congress in front of global media. And, and, the, former China, world. and the former China vice premier can die strangely for heart attacks. And the official death report came out before his official death time. <laughs> That's gangster. That's very simple, right? And and do you think that Taiwan would have a future if their presidential candidates have been colluding with the Communist Party and if Taiwanese people wants to elect such candidates as their next president? So I, I think this is, you know, these are all simple facts. These are not even intelligence of the of the new federal state of China. They are facts of how Chinese Communist Party had dealt with its own officials and, and of how Chinese Communist Party had become the world's largest communist dictatorship regime, even in the 20th century, right? And so uh, I think all, especially for Chinese uh, and for all of the Taiwan and Hong Kong uh, of our brothers and sisters, we won't be able to have future if we don't you know, rise up and take down the CCP ourselves. This is the only way that Chinese can save ourselves by taking down the Communist Party. I'm thinking, I keep seeing the old guy um, being walked out behind G and him kind of moving kind of slow, but trying to look at everybody to make them look at him in a like help me type situation. That, that reminds me of um, the Godfather scene where he's like, for old time's sake, or <laughs> to um, uh, can you save me for? Old time sake. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, and Tess and you're Tessio. right. Yeah, Tessia. They did it right in front of the whole world, and the whole world just looked. Well, I guess you won't be seeing him again, <laughs> right? <laughs> hey, they okay. don't even try to hide it. You know, no, no, no they don't. The do they? That's the most offensive thing. Well, yeah. you know what? Drew? Why here? Why hide it? Because that makes you look more. I mean, if you can do it like that, that's a lot of power right there. I mean, you, I mean, what are you going to do with somebody that walks somebody out and, and disappears? Well, I haven't seen him in four weeks from the time that we saw him on TV. You look at that clip. Out. You look at that clip that you played of the Chinese CCP cyber attack, mm -hmm. and then you pan over to the panel, and Steve Ducey is protecting Biden every day on there. Oh, right, every day. Yeah. Yep. You know, it's yeah. like you got to be real careful with this stuff. This is a people are deep into this, real deep. And like you said, they cut ties later on when their usefulness is is over. You know, they keep you your can eye spend on all Zelensky. the money that they, huh? Keep your eye on Zelensky's future. Yeah. Well, actually, we'll have to I, talk about that in a sec. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That's getting um, really it, interesting. Ayla, um, before I let you go, do you have any last words for our audience? Absolutely. Uh, well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for always having, you know, us on the Wind Dupree oh, broadcast. No and, and I think, you know, that this is our honor to have our voices to be louder and, and, and to be spread to more audience. The new federal state of China have, have never, you know, had other requests but to take down the Chinese Communist Party. And, and we are very clear that, you know, all of the felt will fall into the CCP, but not the Chinese people. There are many, many Chinese people who are willing and yearning for ending the communism in China. And I think this is, you know, the American people and the Chinese people shall have the common goal. We need to eliminate the communism and eliminate the last world largest communist authoritarian regime. That's the CCP. Well, Thanks, thank you, little sister. Thank, thank you. you for everything that y'all do over there. And we 
Um, look forward to having um, someone come in on Thursday. You take care of yourself. See you soon. That was our little sister. I'm so glad. I mean, she, she, uh, you know, she brings the laughter and stuff. But you know what? We got to hit on the Zelensky thing too, because um, I, I think he knows his his days are cooked. Uh, but he came out and he made a threat. I think I got it. I got it. He made a threat, and then like five people in the administration made a threat. Lloyd Austin, I'll tell you that guy. Here, Ukraine warns of devastating consequences if EU split on membership bid. Really? What you gonna do, little man? <laughs> you know, look, man. That's what you gotta do? Don't get don't get fooled into thinking that Zelensky's doing anything. That ain't Zelensky. That's Victoria Newland. Yep. Right. You gotta you gotta remember he's just a puppet. He's an actor. He's no he's worthless. Right. Well, right. and you gotta realize too how they condition this stuff to happen. Because if you remember a year ago, oh, if we send tanks and fighter jets, that's basically World War Three. Now, 12 months later, we're sending tanks and fighter jets. A scary thing happened right. though. So, and we've been talking about it on the show like three, four weeks ago, they changed the recruiting messages for the military to have alpha white males in in their recruiting ads. And then all of a sudden last week in the last 10 days, John Kirby, a couple members of the military came out saying if we don't stop Ukraine, we will we will put our sons and daughters in harm's way, insinuating that American troops would be in Ukraine. And now so so they foreshadow this stuff, right? To kind of condition you to hear that. And I saw no fewer than five people, Janet Yellen even said it the freaking cabinet member who's in charge of the finances said oh if we don't find a way to stop putin in there we will we'll have american men and women so they're conditioning this but zelensky's in town this week i believe it's tomorrow right. and right. now they're saying he's going to be addressing military senate. leaders and the senate and the senate and the senate's all in for war yep. yeah yeah i'll tell you that's uh uh, the, thing that, the thing that scares me worse than that is these traitors in the Democrat Party. What they're doing right now is they're trying to destroy the United States military and add all these. You might as well give the military overseas because if you put all these illegal aliens in there, and that's what Dick Durbin and these people are going to try to do. Yeah, Americans, think of, think of the big picture. Look what they did to the military. Who in their right mind would join it right now? No one. Uh, what American in their right mind would join it? That's patriotic. Almost zero. So what do they do? They open the borders up. Now they can fill it with communists. And then what? Then where are we? Where are we when our military meets its numbers, but they can't even talk to each other? Yeah. You know. It scares me. You mentioned. You mentioned. Um. The Democrats, well, Chris Murphy was on TV yesterday. And now uh, if most Americans, most patriot, more pat most patriots, when they see this, this should anger them. And that's one of the reasons why I'm sharing it with you, because I want to see what my boys are going to say. But listen to what Chris Murphy says about the border in Ukraine. Republicans would argue, many of them, they're not calling to completely shut down the border, but as you say, to make it tougher to get through. If you look at the poll numbers, the latest Wall Street Journal poll shows a whopping 64% of people disapprove of President Biden's handling of the border. Does that add pressure on you, on Democrats, to get something done here? Well, listen, I, I'm not paying attention to the politics here. What I know is that the future of the world is at stake. If we fail, if Republicans don't get reasonable in the next 24 to 48 hours, um, Russia is going to march into Ukraine. China is going to be given a green light to invade Taiwan. The world for my children is fundamentally different under that scenario, the United States security is at risk. So I, I am just beside myself that Republicans are playing games with the security of the world. So basically, Murphy is claiming if the Republicans don't give up their push for border security, because that's because that's what it's 
coming down to you. Secure our borders, and then we may be able to do something somehow, some way. But he's saying in the next 24 to 48 hours, he's putting a time limit on this thing. Russia's going to march into Ukraine. That I mean, and I, Russia's already in Ukraine. They've been there for a year. Exactly. exactly. Well, this just in, too, and I've had a very consistent position. I think the show largely agrees. If this is that big of threat, put a declaration of war on the floor of the house. Why not? Let's send American troops in there and let's let's just get this over with. But you can't use rhetoric like the world's going to fundamentally change if we don't just keep sending trillions of dollars over there. No, like if that it's that bad. Right right after you say, I'm not even paying attention to the politics of this. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if it's, you, you if make it's it that politics. bad and it's that serious, it is worth sending our troops in there. Let's put a declaration. And there war. you will find out that it is not that serious and it will exactly. not be voted for. That's it's correct. just a scam to steal money from the American people. And you, yep. we've said it from the beginning because if it was really serious, mm-hmm. they would have issued a declaration of war. A long time ago. Check this out. I think this is one of the most dangerous moments that I've ever faced in American politics, and I wish Republicans weren't holding Israel aid and aid to Ukraine hostage to the resolution of immigration reform. I'll tell you, he's got yeah. problems. I, this, this political theater. You see I, that? I think, yeah, but listen to this. My, my buddy told me that he thinks when, when John Fetterman had his stroke, the medication, the top-level medication – that they gave him made him smart. They didn't expect that. He came out. I hope Democrats can understand that it is not xenophobic to be concerned about the border. It's a reasonable conversation and Democrats should engage. Fetterman. Well, look, and 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 um how did I <laughs> how did I start off the show on Thursday? And uh, you've also been calling for to get rid of uh, Menendez, I know. Um, but first, before we talk about that, what's your reaction to the exp- expulsion? Well, it's like, uh, I'm not surprised. But but to me, w- I think the, the more important picture is, is that we have a colleague in, in the Senate that actually did much more sinister and, and serious kinds of things. Uh, Senator Menendez, uh, he needs to go. Um, and if you are going to expel... <laughs> Actually, I love that theory, Hutch, because there's always stories about when people have a stroke, yeah. and all of a sudden, like they learn how to speak Spanish or they can't taste <laughs> chocolate or something. Maybe Fetterman had a like the Wayne Dupree show conspiracy theory. Fetterman <laughs> had a stroke, and suddenly he became it's not, not just a brainwashed idiot. In three, I gotta say, in, I follow his Twitter, and it's great. In three or four, I mean, he's learned how to hit back, like. <laughs> With, with ease on Twitter about he's people. like a, and, he's and like a Republican, right? Huh? He, he's like a Republican. That's what I was going to say. In about three or four months, he's like, "Well, I am." <laughs> He'll be out of a MAGA hat on, <laughs> right? He's like, I'm switching to John. Send, send, me, send me your address. I'll hook you up with a hat. <laughs> We're in. Do you want Trump 2024? Do you want just the straight Make America Great Again? Just let me know, John. And, and, and get a coffee cup while you're at it. Yeah, get a Wayne Dupree coffee cup. Wayne, you could drive one over to him, and we could do a live stream from his office. You're not that far. (laughs) Everybody gets coffee cups this Christmas. I got 2,475 coffee cups. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. So, So to tell the coffee cup story, my old company that distributes coffee cups, you can get them at WayneDupree.com. They had a bunch of stock of them. And they were trying to clear them up. They were doing inventory or something in the warehouse. And I'm like, well, give me a good deal on them, and I'll just get them for the show. And I'll send some to me, some to Hutch, some to Wayne. And then they gave me a good deal on them. So I'm like, okay. And then I think Hutch got like 20. I think the television got delivered to me. I thought it was a TV or a a microwave. I I swear I thought mine was an another elliptical. I was going to say, I got like 20. Hutch got like 20, which is appropriate. I've already given out like five. I got (laughs) 5,472. Wait, wait, second stall in his garage is now all coffee cups. Oh, that's funny. They're really yeah. great cups. Oh. Got, there's white and black. Okay. Got, just swing by Wayne's house if you need one. They're on, oh mine, mine are on the back porch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, look, look, let me um 
common sense. Let me throw this to you. The top two issues for American voters are inflation and the border. And the president gets large disapproval rates for handling inflation. And Americans think his administration's actions led to it growing, as you can see there, not slowing. Why don't you think the president's policies are resonating more? Look, the president gets it. I get it. I have a 95-year-old grandmother in Clinton, Louisiana, so I get firsthand uh, feedback on what people are feeling at the ground uh, in these small little towns like I'm from. So I get it. The macro numbers are going as well as anybody could have predicted, mm -hmm. right? Inflation coming down, uh, job numbers remaining strong, uh, but people have got to feel it. And it's going to take time. When the macro economy, uh, we... It's going to take time, huh? He's been in office for about three years. It's going to take time. No, I, I, don't see have those, I see those numbers. Do you guys ever like like Biden on inflation? Seventy percent disapprove. Who are the freaking thirty percent? Who are the people that doesn't think that don't think inflation is high? I mean, butter is six seventy five a pound, right? People in D.C. Actually, what's funny is some people just refuse to see obvious things. And yeah, when you, you're right. And when you they, right. they would rather believe everything's okay than yeah. we look at things very cynically, just in general. And some I'm people look at it the opposite, where they look at it like, oh, well, the talking box says inflation's under control. Inflation must be. They wouldn't lie to me. You know, it was funny. Yeah. I was listening to a show this weekend that was a guy who became a he calls himself a conspiracy theory podcaster. But it was shortly after 9-11 when Building 7 fell down. And he's like, mm -hmm. OK, this makes no sense. I have no idea why this building fell down. And then he just starts going down all these rabbit holes about stuff they lie to you about. And it's it's taken him many interesting places. But but it's funny because like us, we'll look at building seven and go, yeah, something's weird. I don't know what happened, but that was weird. I think the biggest thing for me uh, recently that's been uncovered that I never even thought about was this child trafficking phenomenon. I had no idea how deep that went, man. I mean, that's a, and even to the extent where if there's that much interest, if there's that many people that are that messed up that do that kind of thing, and it costs so much, did they really start wars just for that? Just to get the children to harvest? They call it harvesting. Yeah. I mean, think about that harvesting. I got to say, if you go down the child trafficking rabbit hole, it's really terrifying. I'll bet. Because you, you've you heard this stuff about, oh, there's these elites that are harvesting organs or endocrinome and all this conspiracy theory stuff, right? They're the and, only people that live to 100. Right. Well, And then you start seeing <laughs> ancillary evidence, like why do all these rich and powerful people live to be 100? How the hell did Henry Kissinger just die? Right. <laughs> Freaking but then Richard you, Nixon died 30 years ago. But then you look that. at something like child trafficking with Sound of Freedom, with Epstein Island, with with the uh, Pizzagate taking the pizza parlor out, but the the what's his name emails mm -hmm. the, the 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 significant people in Hollywood that have been arrested for pedophilia and that sort of thing. This should be front page news that we're talking about every day. This should these be the freaking journalists one. that do it. Half of them, half of them are the ones right. busted. Yeah, this is really bad. I mean, when you, the thing that got me that got me like pricked my ears up with this was when they use orphanages for bait. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. they did, all you got to do is put a sign "orphanage" on your building, and it'll come streaming through the door. Yeah, right out well, the back door. Check out how many orphanages the Clinton Foundation funded in Haiti after oh, the hurricane. Man. Jesus, oh, don't know, go what, down you know. that rabbit hole. I'm just warning. Yeah. And Ukraine yeah, too. Yeah, I yeah, mean, there's no right. There's oh, little yeah. Ukrainian girls and boys all over the world right now, I'll bet. Yep. Yeah, the Clinton, the Clintons are king and queen of um, um, Haiti. Listen, the reason why my head is going up and down right now, there's breaking news. Um, Jack Smith is urging the Supreme Court for a quick ruling on the question of whether Donald Trump can face prosecution for charges related to the 2020 election case that just came down. Pray for the Supreme Court justices. 
Mm-hmm. They know what's right. Understand that. Yep. This You're is- going to find out if the Supreme Court's compromised, and I yeah. think we're not going to like the answer we get. You think so? I hope not, man. I, I swear, it, you know, the thing about the Supreme Court, they could have stopped so much carnage in this country. They could have stopped the Civil War. You know, there, there's there's things that, that they just want to count. Sometimes they don't. I don't know. I pray for them. I hope they. I hope the right thing happens. If, if you look at institutions, that's like um, the last one, one of the last few. It's supposed to be, but the legislative branch is jealous of that. So they're trying to stop the Supreme Court. I mean, they're talking about putting, um, uh, uh, what is it, limit, term limits on the Supreme, Supreme Court now. And not themselves, but the Supreme Court. But if, if the Supreme Court tells Jack Smith, if they do this quick ruling, which I, I don't know if they really do that or not, but let's say that they take it up and they... They come back and say, well, yeah, he can. Uh, what what does that do for, uh, uh, because it looks like he's trying to get it done before January. It looks like he's trying to get it done before the Iowa caucus. Um, what does that do? Amer- um, America-wise, um, voter-wise, does it make more people um, surround Donald Trump? Or does it say, well, if the, if the Supreme Court is gone, then those appeals are more likely to be gone if they get thrown up to him. Because if they said he can be charged and they come up with these appeals later on, the appeals aren't going to mean nothing. So what do y'all think that means? I am not the right guy to ask. I don't I don't know. I, I, I'm looking at this. This whole thing is so bizarre to me. And there's so many people involved in it i would have never thought that this many americans would be so anti-american as the people supporting all these litigations all these cases indictments it's 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 beyond and even the media everybody everybody who's going out and charging against trump and cheering against trump is cheering against our way of life well i gotta say just a couple thoughts on that one anybody that can look at president trump having 91 felony indictments and think that's normal you're an idiot like, yeah, I'm sorry, you're an idiot. The only sorry, ex-president that's ever though, faced... Right. right. What's that? Right. I mean, every time you say it, my mind can't process it because I've never seen anything like that before. 90, 90, 90 some indictments. And it's not funny, but it's like, I can't believe that they're doing it. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I mean, I, I, anybody who takes the side of this is normal, this is right, this is... You're... you're, you're you're complete, you're gone. Your brain's gone because of all the presidents in my lifetime, I think virtually everyone could face felony charges for something. I think the, the speaker of the house and Senate and, and the significant, you know, the heads of the party, same thing. How come none of those people are ever prosecuted, but Trump is. Well, that's what you you understand. If you, if you look at the code of federal regulations, federal law, federal criminal law, the system is set up. They have enough to get a felony on every citizen. Right. That's the you way the system that. is designed. Yeah. It's designed that way. I mean, the, the law books stack up 10 feet tall. I mean, it, but they don't apply it. Hillary Clinton broke the law and should have never been allowed to be oh president because of those emails that she erased. And it's written oh. right in the CFR, and everybody ignored it, including Brett Baer throughout the entire election process, yeah. never said a word about it. They all knew that that was there. Yeah. Well, and that's what's funny is anybody who says, well, Donald Trump has his chance in the in the court of law to prove himself innocent. OK, let's turn the DOJ loose on you. Let's let the IRS go through your taxes. Let's let them go through all your stuff. Is the tag cut off your mattress? Congratulations. <laughs> like that's a felony. And and then and then let's talk. But the other stuff about this, I, I mean. I've said there's a 20% chance there won't be an election in 2024. I'm sticking to that number. I think there's a 20 to 30% chance that there's at least an attempted assassination of Trump between now and the election. And I think the third thing is, is that I'm going to give it a 60, 70% chance that we are voting for uh, President Trump with a felony conviction. 
I think there's better than 50 50 chance at that. I think I think that he will be found guilty before the election election. Yep. I think that there will be an election though. Because I don't think that they're afraid to stop it. Because if they can do what they did in 2020, they do it again in 20. They're already talking about white lung and everything else. You know? And they take oh, the music oh, oh. next off the counter. I'm um, just saying it's kind of like my concern with the Santa. I think the establishment's gonna flood Iowa with money and people. That's why Casey was calling for people to go down there just to try to the, I mean, they gotta be thinking like, oh, we only need a hundred thousand people to go vote and DeSantis can win. Um well, I Nick, think well, that yeah. But I think mean? as we get closer to 2024, the establishment, the machine, is going to get more concerned if if this trend keeps continuing. What do you think would happen if DeSantis won Iowa? How can well, that, conversation, I, that conversation would be bizarre? Well, I know this. If he does win Iowa, he's not winning New Hampshire. And he's not winning South Carolina. So there you go. I'm saying the establishment Republican Party has put what three, four hundred million behind getting Ron DeSantis elected. He spent virtually all that money into yeah. Iowa. Yeah. And the the machine's not gonna stop. Well, I, that was and I'm not saying if every money. mega voter in Iowa turns out, it's a bloodbath. Right. But that but that was early money because now the money is going behind Haley, right? Right. Yeah, they're shifting. Yeah, that that was early money that Ron just just spent like on a Friday night hooker. Now, from what they're seeing right now, they're like, okay, he's running out of money. He doesn't know how to take care of money. Let's go ahead and put our money behind Nikki Haley. Did you see the numbers uh, for Haley um, over Biden? Well, again, there's it, it, only poll numbers, That's but they're news. putting it up that he's uh, that she's uh, double digits over um, Biden. Well, how you could know? that be? That's what are I'm saying. Are, are, th- th- is anybody MAGA that you know behind Nikki Haley? You have to you get know all the- MAGA to be over Biden. Say that again. I said, do we know anybody that's in the MAGA movement that would rally behind Nikki Haley? If they already have a poll saying that if Nikki Trump Haley wasn't was- around. So you didn't say that part. No, 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 no. Well, they just put Haley up against Biden. She was double okay. digits. Then head they put head. Trump right head to head. And then they put Trump up against Biden and he's five or six points ahead. So Biden. that means that more, more MAGA people voted in that poll for Nikki Haley than Donald Trump. No, I don't believe it. Or more Republicans voted for Nikki Haley. I don't think there's that many of them. Maybe I'm wrong. I do. Do you? I do. Yeah, I I don't think that MAGA is the majority of the Republican side yet. I really don't. Oh wow, I do. I I mean, I think I think that I think that MAGA. Well, that see, I, I got on this show and complained during 2020 because I was like, what MAGA needs to be doing in helping President Trump? MAGA needs to be getting out there and knocking on doors and telling people to 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 vote for President Trump. So that it grows our base, but more people wanted to stay online and tweet and retweet President Trump instead of going out there and doing the work. So I was like, "Well, I don't. I mean, I don't know if he's really. I really didn't know if he was growing his base in 2020, like the phenomenon he did in 2016. Now, when it comes to 2024, I'm like, I still see people." online and that's why last week i'm like we need MAGA to, to start running for seats in congress i agree with okay. that we and i to, to i because if i had my 10 thing i'm like man they opening up these seats like they did in 2018 man they when you open up a seat i'm like god damn man if that thing is the Eston stone for a republican thing you're playing with fire when you do s- stuff like that. So for me, I'm like, okay, we, I I just don't think that there's more. I mean, I wish that there were more MAGA than Republican, but 
Well, think about if this. If you look at what Republicans did to MAGA in 2020, I there think were you more gotta, Republicans than MAGA in 2020. I think you got to them to do what they did to Trump. See, I think the Democrats did that. They couldn't have did it without Republicans. He had more Republican votes that, no, I mean, you're right about that, Republican establishment people. But as far as voters go, he got more votes in the 2020 election than anybody's ever gotten in history. Well, he also had got Democrats and independents, too. And so, I think that's another constituency that's in play now. When you look at what happened to Israel and you look at the Democrat reaction, the Jews are bailing out of the Democrat Party. And they were a big constituency. And well, let me ask you something. Let me ask you this, because I because I know how it was on election day in twenty twenty here. When you went, was there a line? No. Okay, there wasn't a line here either. There was in sixteen. Yes, in sixteen, but it wasn't in twenty twenty. No. When when we were told when everybody uh, I oh, I felt like I was participating in a fraud in twenty twenty. Okay. Um, for me, I was like, I could have swore that there was going to be a waiting line, you know, we where used I was. And we I didn't see it. machine touch, touch screen voting my whole for the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. I went in there in 2020 and I filled this ballot out and I put it in this machine. It sucked it yeah. in mm-hmm. and it, it was like a shredder. That with me. It was like a shredder. I don't yeah. know what happened to that ballot. It went in there, and they gave me a little ticket. A receipt, that said, yeah. I-, I voted. Right. It didn't say who I voted for. It just no, said I voted. voted. Yeah, it rarely ever does that. But it's did you get a receipt? Too. Oh, That's, really? Okay. That was right. my receipt. Well, you know, it's interesting. If you look at MAGA, I think the one characteristic that the MAGA voter has is we have understood and we've accepted the fact that our government is beyond horribly corrupt. And... I yes. think that's kind of the the underlying theory. And we're different parts. Some people are more or less conspiratorial. But we see the war in Ukraine. Take all the bullshit out. It's just a money grab for politicians. Let's be honest. You know, you, you see some of those things. Even Israel. And Israel has a right to defend themselves. But the way we're approaching it is just a money grab for politicians. Yep. You know, and, and I think that's the MAGA base. And President Trump represents that repudiation of that notion like he's one of us looking at the government saying you're corrupt i don't think that's more than than 40 50 percent at most of of the average republican voters i think there's still a bunch of normal republicans who thought mitt romney was a great candidate and (laughs) republicans will get him this time because they don't want to accept how screwed we are you know but look at what what's happening to the mitt romneys they're getting turfed out one by one Right. Joe Manchin's down in West Virginia trying to pretend that being a moderate is going to help. He's going to get dusted off down there. He's done. Well, and what's really going to be powerful, what they got to watch out for, and I've, I've said this before about Bernie Sanders, the Bernie bros understood that the government was the enemy and that was the corruption. And if Bernie would have stood up and said, this establishment is screwing me, then he would have been Trump on the left, you know, now he, Bernie is ideologically a fraud and communism is bad and all those things, but I'm just saying it's on the left. What's that? We we literally caught him Trump on the left for what was happening. It really shocked us that they made him give up and he gave up. I'm just saying at some point, and that's why I like this Fetterman thing gives me a twinkle of hope because there's a bunch of people on the Democrat side that think we probably should have a border. Like it's not bad to have a border, right? You know, right. and if we could ever you're, stop arguing you're about seeing that in the, in the hotbeds of the blue cities, right? People, people there are getting squeezed. They're going to change too. That's another right. uh, constituency that's up for grabs, right? Yeah. And I, I mean, mean, if you, you can actually Bernie. adopt an American first agenda and they weren't able to label it as racist or extremist or whatnot. I I think there's people on the right and left that would support it. If he continues with that America first type of thing, especially in these day and times, he's going to win hands down. If he continues with that, I mean, because that right there, you need to put that thing on a freaking flag. He needs Um, to get a security battalion and go into Chicago 
and do yeah. a rally in Chicago. Oh, yeah. Do a rally in New York. But make yeah. sure you have awesome security. Oh, yeah. Host it right in front. Yeah, um, right. right in front of the immigration centers where, I mean, who was it? Somebody else came out this weekend and said that they shot down federal money for the migrants. And they're like, we're going to have to cut back on public service. It was one of these blue state mayors. Did I you think. hear what they said about the Democrat convention huh. in Chicago? They said, you're flooding all these immigrants in here. You think you're just going to have a peaceful DNC? He said, watch. Oh, watch right. what happens in Chicago. Oh, I never thought well, of that. Because what he ought to do is he ought to go into these cities and he ought to issue a challenge. Don't let them steal this from me. In these right. inner cities, don't. I mean, to the inner city people say. That would be great. That would be great. Start, start. Get, issuing your, get your grassroots army in the city. You're right. Yeah. Start, start issuing challenges at certain places. Y'all see these numbers, even though we aren't into that stuff. But y'all see these numbers. Y'all see what they're telling you. Don't let them steal. Go to Philadelphia and say that. Go to Pittsburgh yep, and say exactly. that. Baltimore, exactly. Detroit, Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Arizona, Atlanta, um, Georgia, where, uh, yep. yeah, uh, Michigan. Go to all those places. Don't let them steal. Since they and, say and show, five, show these people that you appreciate their support. Right. Right. Yes. 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 Um, I remember. I remember because usually you don't hear this from politicians. I remember him getting up on stage during the twenty sixteen election. And somebody said, I love you. He was like, I love you too. I was like, oh, crap. Yeah. He said it back. <laughs> you usually don't hear politicians say that. That's when you knew he was different. I knew you see he was him. different when he said he's going to bring steel back to Pittsburgh. And all of a sudden he brought steel back. Yeah. I was like, whoa. I didn't yeah. think that was Paul. I thought he was nuts for saying that. Watching him get out of the car. Because the ruckus, the protesters were in front of the joint. They drove up behind the joint and he crossed the highway <laughs> on foot, went down in the ravine, jumped over that wall, climbed over the wall, straightened up his tie and walked in the back door. I was like, oh man, he that's a rock star, right? <laughs> He's gangster. <laughs> he is gangster. That's it. That's the dude. That is the dude. He's going to be president of the United States. And the reason why more people, maybe not the educated middle class or the, and, and, and you know, I ain't calling nobody dumb, but y'all listen to me. Maybe not the educated middle class or the upper tier of making money educated them up there. But that's why the people on the bottom connect with them so much. We're like, the dude might be a big, might be a billionaire, but he looked like somebody that would come in and sit down at our table and sit down and eat and talk to us at McDonald's. Yeah, what? McDonald's and Kentucky Fried Chicken, and and you know he's Hardee's. He's sitting there. He's sitting there on a plane where he can have steak, beef tartare, <laughs> eggs Benedict, and he's eating McDonald's. Our president. Yes. Love him. Okay, so key crossing between Israel and Gaza remains closed despite hopes it would reopen today. Oh, um, Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis, um, presidential town hall is on Wednesday. Huh. No, it's on Tuesday. Vivek is on Wednesday. Did y'all see, um, before we go, uh, uh, did you? Rumors came out that there were three more presidential debates happening in January. CNN. CNN. And then when that got out, then the GOP was like, no, nah, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. We're not, you know. We're, like, well, the wait, first thing that came out, they were slamming the RNC for it before they did that. Right. 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 <clears throat> After the RNC, it said that they, that no liberal, no would would be hosting it, then they put out like three or four different ones. I was like, okay, I, I see what you're doing. I, you know, yeah. Oh, you know, DeSantis Haley on stage. DeSantis Haley and those guys, there'll be some sort of something on liberal networks. I guarantee yeah. it. Yeah. Between now and Iowa. Oh yeah. Plus, 
you know, they're trying to get Trump on, trying to get him on at all costs. They're trying to get him on. Uh, I just don't have... I just don't understand how Ron DeSantis can stand up there in those shoes when they curl up like <laughs> little Sinbad shoes, you know, with the little curl. <laughs> you know, a little curl on the thing. I don't know. I don't wear high heels. Like, so. like the shoes were after they took the ruby slippers off them. Right. <laughs> Mounting. Mounting. All right. We got to go. We, we got some guests coming on um, this week. Um, uh, we're, we're coming in. Let's see. Wait a minute. I think. Okay. No, we got. No, actually. Next week, we broadcast on Monday, but then we're out Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. This is the 1920. Um, Christmas is that Monday following. And then we'll be back on that Wednesday and Thursday, the 27th and 28th, out on 29th. So mark your calendars. The 19th, 20th, 21st, and 22nd, we're out. Out on the 26th, out on the 28th and 29th. Families, y'all. Families. And uh, I mean, if something big, big time happens that we don't know about, you know, we'll, we'll go live. I'll, I'll, I'll connect with the boys and say, hey, let's go, let's go. But other than that, uh, we got um, end of the year type stuff coming out. And, you know, we got to straighten some straighten some things out with the uh, primaries and stuff starting uh, next month. And by the way, I, I had to take up for Jason, uh, the, the, the person who sent me up, uh, 7,684 coffee cups. I had to take up for him. Um, someone called him out on him speaking about the caucuses. Jason was using the word primary when um, in the caucus type of um, <laughs> thing. And they got caught up on it because me and Hutch didn't say anything to correct Jason. And I'm like, first off, when I'm primary. From I'm from Pennsylvania, man. I, I don't even know what a caucus is. Yeah, we're, we're right. in primary season. That I mean, the general is next November, but we're in primary season, and the caucus is inside the primary. So that's what Jason was talking about. He he wasn't wrong. And What's it I, called? But, it's called the first in the nation primary. Yeah, Correct. I mean, so many people. If you if you spend twelve hours. Of the day, minding your own business, <laughs> and twelve hours, and the other twelve hours, leaving everybody else's alone, you'll be in very good company. For real, he tried. He he tried to he tried to call out. I was like you, 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 man. I'm serious. Social media is the death of us, boy. <laughs> okay, Jason, give me some last thoughts, and then Hutch, and let's get the hell out of here. What? All wait, right, wait, 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 wait. What are you having for dinner? Dinner tonight, yeah. We Jen got fresh hamburger from the butcher, and tonight we're having hamburgers, and then they bake their own buns there, and so Ooh. the fresh baked buns. So yeah, and and I think if she's watching, I think I want to try doing it juicy Lucy style, where you shove a little cheese in there and then put a little cheese on top. I got you. That's what I'm talking about. What type of cheese? I haven't decided yet. I probably American. Okay. There's a um, there's a what's the white and white and yellow cheese? Colby Jack. Uh, Marble Jack. Colby Jack. Colby Jack is good and good as Jack too, but I think Colby Jack works better. Um, okay, so last thoughts, Jay, and then Hutch, and then let's roll. All right. Well, uh, first, folks, thanks for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate the support as always, and you know, Merry Christmas to everybody watching. One quick story, so friend of jen's and her husband who's been going through he needs a liver transplant so he's had some health problems they came over this weekend and they're they're joe biden voters we still love them they still love us and uh and it was funny because they they came over to watch a movie lady ballers which if you haven't seen it it's even funnier the second time it's like dodgeball where like every time i watch it i laugh harder because these scenes are funny 
And so, and they're lefties coming over to watch lady ballers. And then we were talking about like the women in sports and they're like, that's not really happening. We're like, yeah, it is. And there was this great awakening where we were like talking about things they didn't understand. So, so people on the left are reachable, but what was really funny is they were talking about that new Julia Roberts movie we mentioned earlier, which I haven't had a chance to watch it yet. So I'm just going by what they said about which it. Called Leave the world behind. And it was, oh, funny. I, oh I watched it. Was it good? Yeah, I gotta watch it. <laughs> gotta watch it. That's all I gotta say. That's, That's what she said. Say. And it's so funny because I actually oh. grabbed my tinfoil hat and I, I, I said, "Okay, Bridget, you need I'm gonna it. give you, you tinfoil it. hat, and I'm gonna say they they work with the entertainment industry to introduce these concepts into mm -hmm. the everyday language so that when it really happens, people don't freak out." And I'm like, before COVID, you got all these movies about viral outbreaks and zombie apocalypse. And then they drop COVID on you. And I said, you just wait. Cy like, cyber attack's going to be in the news because it sounds like that's what the show's about. And son of a bitch, this morning I got to text her yeah, the yeah, article yeah, yeah, with the link yeah. to the video about a cyber yeah. attack. And she's like, no way, no way, no way. So you're telling me that there's coordination with the entertainment and they put this stuff out to get us ready so that when we hear it on the news, people don't freak out. And they've been doing this forever. I mean, think back to the China syndrome. Right. There you go. They with, with Three Mile Island. I mean, right. You know, it, it's it was crazy. a movie about Three Mile Island. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Hutch. Yeah. So anyway, Hutch, so that was my funny Hutch, story. Right okay. Hutch, okay, over to you. Yeah. All right. So I'm having a ground sirloin uh, with pasta and some gravy. It's actually called Hamburger Helper. I'm having that tonight. You know what? I, I was going to say, oh, to Diddy, are you? But okay, all right. Man. <laughs> so that's what I'm having for dinner. Senator Rick Scott from Florida sent a letter to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo on Wednesday calling for an, see if you remember this, folks, calling for an investigation into the food safety of garlic grown in communist China. The center specifically cited China's alleged use of human feces to fertilize garlic, growing the vegetable in sewage, bleaching it to appear cleaner, and harvesting garlic in abhorrent conditions, often with slave labor. And that's why I grow my own garlic, because of that. <laughs> you should know they have the giant market share they of, do. The, of, of garlic in the United States. Mm -hmm. Be careful. Garlic's not supposed to be that white. Really? It's no. supposed to be yellow, right? It's dark. It's got a brown complexion to it, and there's dirt on it on the roots. That's right. that's so they can get past the FDA. I think they got to kind of pick it. Right, yeah. It grows under the feces. Listen, whatever y'all do, y'all got to watch that movie, or you, you got to watch it because I kept seeing about it. I kept seeing it, and I was like, let me sit down here and watch it. It didn't go where I thought it was, and it ended up where I didn't believe that it would. So it's one of those that we need to talk about because, you know, we, you know, we talk about a lot, a lot of that stuff we talk about. We right. talk about that stuff. And what happened, you know, remember the one, I'll tell you the one that got me too. I couldn't think of it a while ago. Ozark and the voting yeah. machines. Right. Yeah. yeah. They're selling voting machines, crooked voting machines. And that was before it happened. Well, it happened on Narcos too. It happened down there in Mexico, where they, um, um, the president down there, uh, uh, from Mexico, not Narcos Colombia. It was Narcos Mexico. They put zeros on the ends of stuff, yeah. and they had people picking up. I remember the, that. Yep, yeah. the votes from the different places, and um, they had an inside guy. Working with the voting machines, counting, just changing votes. I'm like, oh, it happened back in the in the eighties, really? Jake, they does Jake Tapper have a badge? They give a badge to Jake Tapper. <laughs> he needs one. Wow. What's the name of that movie again? Uh, right. It's called Leave the World Behind. It Leave sounds like it's behind. only on Netflix right now. I've yeah. just seen the previews. My wife, I was like, oh, we got to find time to watch that. And we're, we're yeah, busy with some of your business stuff. She's like, oh, it might take a little bit here. And so uh, I'm like, we got to go see it. It looks too good. It's so funny when the guy got in between the, the two people with guns. I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just a man. I'm just a man. I can't do anything without GPS 
and and my cell phone, and I'm I'm useless. I'm you because everything was gone. So you know, we'll I'm, we'll be talking about it. We'll be talking about it. Y'all y'all have a great weekend. No great weekend. Y'all uh, we'll see y'all tomorrow. Man, weekend? Did I say weekend? I didn't mean.